Hey live. <clears throat> so for that. I don't know how uh how long this video is gonna be, but this is really just another testimony. I'm trying to put some music in the background. Just talking about some no connection. Well, anyway, for everybody who clicked on this video, I want to thank you uh, for lending me your ear. And so, yeah, I, I pretty much just want to share my testimony on my my experiences with God lately and my conversations with God. Um, and I learned... I am learning that God really is with us every step of the way. Like everything that we choose to involve him in, he will be involved and he will give us the counsel that we need. He will give us the reassurance and the peace of mind that we need in, in that time to be all right and to get through. And so I'm just thankful for that. And... I recently wrote something down that I thought was really interesting. Oh, so I got into, um, well, I got back into gardening. And what I've really been learning, uh, well, the most significant thing that I learned so far is that, okay, so I have like woods in my backyard and I don't even have a gate so like right in right there in my backyard um if I go like a few hundred feet the woods is right there and so for the longest I've been trying to figure out how to you know start gardening and all of that but uh have it not be so expensive because like all the gardening videos that I was that I was watching, they was buying all kind of stuff, all kind of wood to be, to build their their garden beds, and uh, buying all kinds of potting soil and mix and uh, compost and buying manure, and they they gotta they gotta buy all this stuff to to get their gardens together. At least that's what it looked like, and that's what that's all I was seeing. And I'm sitting here trying to figure out, oh, we're like, okay, I, I'm not about to be buying all this pot and mix and, and compost and, and wood to make these garden beds and to start planting, like, but God, he really, he gave me an idea. Like, I was, I was in the woods and I was just looking at everything around me. And I was realizing, like, yo, everything that I need is right here. Like, God, he's he's been guiding me. Like, okay, so last year, I was in the woods all the time, just sitting there. Like, I just liked being there. I liked looking at the trees. I liked, you know, uh, just soaking up the sun and, I don't know, just standing on logs, thinking, I don't know, <laughs> just doing random stuff. Um, but I saw, I saw nature in the woods in a whole new light. And I, I did videos on nature and I was, I was starting to become like enlightened on nature and how, um, how valuable it is, but not to the extent that I do now, because then I thought, you know, we had the universe to thank for nature and all of that. I was, I was lost. I, I hadn't, I hadn't came back to Jesus by then. Um, but now it's like, okay, so you know how, uh, we walk on gold in heaven, like there's golden streets and whatnot. <sighs> what I learned, um, doing my research about gardening is that, okay, so a lot of them, a lot of gardeners, they would, they would set up their compost pile, like a compost bin and, 
um, they'll just put a bunch of green matter like logs and, and wood chips and uh, wood um, grass clippings and stuff like that and um, mix in some uh, kitchen waste like eggshells and, and uh, leftover fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. Um, like the, that's like that's pretty much a compost pile when you're mixing up or stacking up brown and brown and green matter. And what happens is, the longer you let it sit there, the more it'll compost. And what happens is a bunch of uh, a bunch of worms will gather and start eating up the um, the the brown and green matter. And so. What happens after that is they'll, this is kind of gross, <laughs> but they'll create worm castings, which is where they eat up all the brown and green, green matter and they, you know, excavate it. <laughs> I don't know why I feel like saying poop it out is so childish, but it's just gross. But, you know, they poop it out and, um... Yeah, so that's called worm castings. And the worm castings is considered to gardeners, uh, what do they call it? Black gold. Because it, it turns into this black, rich, nutrient-dense soil that you can put right into your garden as a fertilizer. And then it'll just give the whatever it is that you're growing new life and make it grow bigger and just more beautiful and more vibrant because the worm castings are just so nutritious and so like it just has everything that plants need and that that's how that's how topsoil is created it's because of the worms and everything breaking down the you know everything that hits the the um the forest floor or or you know wherever um the decomposers, they break it down and they turn it into topsoil. And so, yeah, I said all that to say I noticed how we consider like the we have black gold here on Earth or what we consider to be black gold. What, what gold is, it's like a, it's just something that's really, really valuable. That's why we call it gold. Like dirt isn't gold, but because of the value that it has, the fact that with these worm castings, AKA black gold, we have life, vibrant life, abundant life comes out of it. Um, and you can, you can grow anything in it. It just, it just creates, it helps create life and gives it nutrients and what as i was thinking about that i immediately thought of the verse on earth as it is in heaven they walk on streets of gold in heaven and we walk on gold here we just call it black gold it doesn't look like gold but it's as valuable as gold matter of fact it's more valuable because we can't eat gold that's why that's why it's called black gold like you grow food in it that's that's how we're able to grow our food through the worms who knew you know I'm learning so much through this whole gardening journey who knew that worms were so valuable but yeah like that was just something really awesome that God showed me, and, and I, I say that because I know at first I said I had this thought, but I know that it's God that, that administers the thoughts that lead back to his word. I know that that's God now. And so, yeah, that's honestly, that's how God speaks to uh, to me most of the time is, you know, I'll just be sitting there thinking and all of a sudden I just start making all these connections uh, between life here and life in heaven and God's word and how it all correlates. <clears throat> and I'm learning that even though <sighs> I'm not going to tell all my business, but 
I'm going through something right now. And I, I just have so much appreciation for God and his patience and his kindness and gentleness. Because the situation that I'm in, I put myself in it. Right? But God, he's still he's still working with me and he's still there. And he's still helping me with everything that I need. Like, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get into more uh, detail on that later. Um, but it's like I put myself between a rock and a hard place. And God warned me. He warned me about the very situation I put myself in. But I put myself in it anyway. And he's still helping me out. And it says that in his word that he, you know, he always gives us a way of escape. Like, we can't always escape consequences of our actions. But, like I said, like, he's always there to, to put us back on track and bring us back to where we need to be. And he's he's not out here. You know, just, you know, I used to think God was so mean. I really did. Like, I I used to think he was just this authoritarian that could care less about how we feel or what we want or, you know, what's going on in our everyday life. He cares about all of that. He wants us to talk to him about it and have a real dialogue with him about it. Not not just, you know, sit there and mm-hmm. vent. And, you know, talk about how we feel and then, okay, on to the next thing. Um, God has really, you know, put it on my heart to let people know that he wants to have a dialogue. He doesn't want a monologue where it's just you talking. He wants you to know that he talks too. And if you if you listen for him, if you just be quiet, you know, you get in your secret place and you listen for him. And ask him, Lord, what is it that... Here's what I do. I go, Lord, what is it that you want to talk about? What is it that you want to say? Is there anything that you want me to pray in particular? Is What what do you want, Lord? What, what can I do for you? Like, pretty much. Well, I don't know when the last time I said, what can I do for you? <laughs> that actually just came to mind. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I said that, but I do ask him, well, what do you want to talk about? Um, perhaps I should ask that more often. What can I do for you, Lord? Yeah. I will. Um, but yeah, having a real relationship. Okay, so here's another thing. For the longest time, um, I read, hold up. It was in Matthew 7. This verse always used to get me like, I would just be like, what did he mean? Like, why Why did he say that? Okay, so it says in uh, Matthew 7, verse 21. Oh, yeah, Matthew 7, verse 21. It says, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name cast out devils and in your name done many wonderful works and then i will profess i will profess to them i never knew you i never knew you depart from me that that always those few verses always used to drive me crazy like what did he mean by that i never knew you and why didn't why didn't he address you know what what they said about the casting out of the devils and the and the doing many works and the prophesying. Excuse me. I guess it's getting late. Um like was that was all of that stuff really not good enough for him? Like I don't get it. Like it it never really made sense. Like cuz cuz who's who's really out here? I used to think like the people that was always praying for people, casting out devils, prophesying over people and stuff like that. I used to think that those were the real men and women of God. The real holy ones, the real people that we should be not emulating because we're supposed to be emulating Jesus. But I thought only saved people do stuff like that. And here he is, 
in Matthew 7 21 verses yeah in Matthew 7 verse 21 through 23 he's saying to the people who do these things depart from me like like so now they I mean you know where they're about to go and that that always used to throw me off like what huh I never got it until recently for weeks now months God has been putting it in my heart how important it is to have a personal relationship so many Christians are out here thinking that because they go to church and because they learn how to prophesy over people and they and they've used the gifts that God gave, gave us like he never he doesn't he doesn't uh he will never revoke our gifts he will never take them back he will allow us to use the gifts that he gave us right but yeah they'll they'll prophesy and they'll and they'll do all of these things and they'll go to church and they'll and they'll have their own ministries and and do this and do that and you know just do the most like do so much and 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 they actually believe that they're doing it all for Jesus, right? But God told me, he literally told me what I care about is the relationship between you and me. If you don't know me, if you if you do not talk to me, you do not know what my will for your life is. You do not know what I want you to do. You you do not know my specific commandments of you. Your your perfect will. Your or your perfect um what's the word? Destiny. The plans that God has written out for you specifically. You don't know them unless I've told you. So if you're not talking to me, if we don't have a up close and personal relationship, if we are not close, then you are completely out of my will. Therefore, you are a worker of iniquity. That's what Jesus explained to me. Like, I get it now. At least, I understand that. I understand now why God is telling him or telling these these people I never knew I never understood that. What is what does that mean? I never knew you. What does that mean? How can they be doing all of this stuff in your name? Excuse me. Prophesying, casting out demons and all of that stuff and not know who you are. That doesn't make any sense. Of course they I mean they have to know about Jesus, but no, it's not about knowing about Jesus it's about knowing him personally when we in the bible in the word you can you can go on different websites like uh bible is it passageway bible pathway i think that's what it's called it's called bible pathway or you can go on bible hub and you can look up uh certain verses or certain phrases and you can look up all the different times that God said something or or uh anything was mentioned and you can look at all the yeah all the times that you know that phrase or that verse was mentioned and you can look at the context to get uh, a a better understanding of what exactly was meant when it was said and it's like you're you're using uh other verses of the Bible to study you know verses in the Bible like you're using the word to study it instead of your own you know ideas and your own um basically yeah your own ideas your what that is is actually leaning on your own understanding when you read something and automatically assume that you know the meaning behind it and you and you use your own analytical you know skills to figure out a meaning a particular meaning of a verse Apparently what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to use other verses in the Bible and, and figure out the context and what exactly was meant then to figure out what's meant um, in the verse that you were reading. <clears throat> but anyway, I digress. 
in the Bible what God means uh, when he when he uses the term to know. Like when he's talking about um, the relationship between uh, man or husband and wife. He he said that they would know each other. They knew each other. They they were intimate. They were close. They were one with each other. So it's like it's the same thing. Like that's the context behind knowing. When he says, "I never knew you," it means he was never intimate with you. He was never close. Y'all were never one. You, it's like you. A lot of these these people that were saying, "Lord," and you know these were Christians because only Christians call Jesus Lord. They're saying, "Lord, have we not done this and that in your name?" They performed for Jesus. They they did a lot of works. That they figured was for Jesus. A lot of the, the works that they thought that they were supposed to do. That they thought they were supposed to do. But God told us to not lean on our own understanding. That's what the personal relationship is for. We don't have to lean on our own understanding. If God is giving us very specific directions. But he can't give them to us. If we're not talking to him. If we if we not taking time out of our day. To, to sit in our secret place. Be quiet and listen to what he got to say. Right. I'm I'm hearing I'm seeing more and more people come out with this message like please, 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 please. Do not think that because you go to church and because you take, you know, uh communion and you you know, you go on mission trips and you, you do this and you do that that you're saved. Please don't think that. God is saying, Jesus said right here in Matthew 7, 21, many will call me Lord. Have I not cast out devils? You know he is talking about Christians. He is saying right here, he's going to be telling many Christians, depart from me. I never knew you. Because of the issue of so many people thinking that because they go to church and they do what they they believe Christians are supposed to do. That's that's why a lot of people are coming out. I don't know about a lot of people, but that's why I've been noticing more and more people come out saying they they're not Christians. They don't Christianity. That's not it. Because a lot of people they they do what they think Christians are supposed to do, and yet they're completely missing it. If you do not have a personal relationship and and when I was trying to explain this, somebody said in my comment section before, oh no, Christianity is a personal relationship with Christ. That's what Christianity is. It's a personal... No. No. Huh? No. No, it's not. Christianity is a system of beliefs, of rituals, of customs, and traditions. That's, that's what Christianity is. It stems from... The Catholic Church, which, I mean, everybody besides Catholics, I guess, knows is corrupt, has been corrupt, always has been corrupt, and is corrupt to this day. Um, and I don't mean to offend anybody by saying that, but, come on now. But that's the thing, like, so many people are aware of this, but they go, oh yeah, that's the Catholic Church. Wait, hold up. Because... You know, Catholic churches aren't the only churches where people get raped. They're not the only churches where people are being lied to and scammed. They're not the only churches where the leaders are horrible examples and are just doing dirt and leading their entire congregation astray. The Catholic church isn't the only one that does this. There are churches everywhere that do this. And it's, it's because... They've missed it. The The enemy is practically runs the church. There's one on every street corner. That, that's how powerful the church is. There's one on every street corner here in America. Excuse me. 
excuse me, in America. But, I mean, what, what good does it do? The real power of Christ comes from the relationship that you have with him. Not through going to church. Not through talking about him all the time. It's not that... Mm -mm. The, the real power comes from actually knowing him. That's why he told them, look, depart from me. I never knew you. You have to be intimate. To know is to be intimate. You have to take time out of your day or out of your night to talk to God. And not just talk to him because you're not monologuing. But, hey, Miss Denise, thanks for joining. But, yeah, you're not. It's not just a monologue between you, or it's not just a monologue of just you talking. It's a it's a dialogue. It's you talking, and then you listening, and listening to God speak. Because he does indeed speak. And if you don't know his voice, you don't know when he's speaking, that's fine. I had that exact same problem. Just ask God to help you figure it out. Ask God to help you... Um, to, to know what his voice sounds like and when he's speaking and he will make it clear to you just just say lord you know i pray i pray for clarity i pray to know for for sure for certain every time you're speaking to me so that we can have an intimate and up close relationship all you have to do is pray pray that prayer consistently and he will help you you will learn eventually, just like I did, just like everybody else who does this did. Like, it just, it takes sitting in your quiet place, your secret place with the Lord. And just being quiet, saying, saying what you need to say, saying your prayers, right? It doesn't even have to be in that order. Like, you could really just sit there and just be like, Lord, I don't even have anything to say. Do you have anything that you want to talk about? Is there anything that you want from me? Anything you want me to do? What can I do for you? And just listen. And eventually, it may not happen overnight, but eventually you will know when God is speaking and you will know exactly what he's saying to you. It will not be this grand mystery for long. I'm, I'm saying this through personal experience. Praise God. And, you know, God, he's not a liar. He said his sheep know his voice. And you do know his voice if you are indeed his sheep. If you follow him and you are truly seeking him and you are listening for him, you will know his voice. That was a promise. It's it's not it's not rocket science, I swear it's not hard. You know, it, you know, everybody says that his his voice is a whisper, and it is. It's like a it's a really soft voice. But you know it. So, yeah, I I genuinely, I just want everybody listening to know that it's important. Like, it's everything. He's going he's gonna to be telling people that didn't make it, I never knew you. If you want to make it and you do want to make it, you're going to want to get into the habit of talking to God. And listening for him. And then after you listen and you hear from him following his instructions. And just building just building the relationship and growing faith to faith. Growing, growing from faith to faith. And that happens automatically. You automatically just grow in him. The more that you talk to him. The more that you spend more time with him. You, you grow. Like it's just. He's life. Like, like how I said earlier, like with the, the black gold, when you apply it to the plants, they grow. They become more vibrant, bigger, more abundant. And that's what Jesus does for all of us, naturally. Just by spending time with him. Just by being in his presence, in his atmosphere. We grow. Hold on. 
So, um, yeah. I feel like a lot of people are missing it. And I don't want anybody to miss it. I don't want anybody to be under the impression that um, that they're saved, that they're, they're they're on the right track and they're doing the right thing, and they really aren't because they missed it. Ultimately, what, what Jesus truly cares about is the relationship. He wants us. We, it's us that he wants. It's not, it's, it's time with us. It's not just what we can do to serve him. And even if you're doing all of this stuff to serve him, and but you but you're not like taking the time to talk to him so he can tell you what he specifically wants from you he doesn't even consider it a service he considers it you doing your own thing despite what he wants for you and what he wants you to do it is going to be completely fruitless and for not He, he said this, he proved it in Matthew 7. All these people casting out demons. Now that's quite a service, you think. Casting out a demon out of somebody. Prophesying over somebody's life. And doing amazing works in Jesus' name. So it's like you, you walk up to somebody and you say in Jesus' name be healed. And they get healed. Right? Like that... Something like that could change somebody's life, especially the person that you're healing. If they was, or if somebody was just to see that, that would change their whole life. But the person doing the healing, apparently, it's possible for you to know about the the power of the name Jesus, and for you to know how to to heal. I mean, it's not necessarily us doing it, so it's not like we know how to do it, but. Apparently, it's possible to to utilize God's power and his love to heal others and prophesy over others and do this and that in his name because the power in his name is real. But we can still completely miss it. And not and not make it ourselves, even though we we. Could have potentially impacted somebody else to come to Christ. If we. If we wind up in front of Jesus. On our judgment day. And we never. And we didn't consistently. Have. A personal relationship. With Jesus Christ. It don't matter what you did. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many times you said his name. It doesn't matter all the works that you did in his name. It doesn't matter how many times you went to church. It doesn't matter if you know the Bible front to back. It doesn't matter how many people you preached to. Jesus, he wants us in order for, it's like, okay, so God, he wants, he, what he is, is holy and unholiness and filth and all of that ungodliness. It can't even exist in his presence. Jesus is our righteousness. He's our perfection, our cleanliness. He's everything that we need to be. He is that. 
without a relationship with him. Without knowing him and without him knowing us and being intimate with us. We don't have that life. That eternal life. Because Jesus is that eternal life. He doesn't. He He gave us himself. He is the eternal life. He said this. He is our eternal life. It's the relationship with him. That is the key. It's us knowing him. You ever heard the term, it's not, it's not what you know, it's who you know? It's not what you know, it's who you know. It's not what you do. It's who you know. You can know that there's power in the name Jesus. You can know that Jesus died and rose again on the third day. You can know all of this. But if you don't know him personally... You are not invited in his house. That's that's actually pretty simple. You can know about Jesus. You can know about his power. You can know about his ministry and everything that he did here on earth and everything that he did for us. You can know all of this. But if you don't know him personally, personally, You're going to be told, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I hope I drove that point home well enough in this video. Uh, because I'm going to end it here. And I hope that you gained something from it. I hope that you understood the point I'm trying to make. Or that I did make. Um... And I just pray that God just opens your heart and your mind to this message. Um, and I thank you for listening. For those of you who did uh, listen all the way through. And I pray in Jesus name that you actually develop a up close and personal relationship with Jesus. That you get to know him. Excuse me. And you and you actually find out how cool of a person he is Jesus is cool like he's I don't want to refer to him as a guy but the words he's a great guy <laughs> came to mind because I don't know he's awesome you'll you don't know anybody like Jesus There's nobody like him. He truly loves you. And I, and I pray that you get to know his love. That you feel it. And you can, you, you can transfer that love to others. And I pray that you, you grow to understand that you cannot do that through without relationship. You can't do it through church services or... You know what the pastor said, or you can't do it through Bible study. You can't you can't do it through reading the Word. I mean, I mean you can read the Word. I mean, there's plenty of people who know the Bible front to back, but they still miss it. There are atheists who've read the Bible front to back. But anyway, yeah. Um, I thank you for everybody watching. Uh, who has watched and um hey Brittany uh, you caught me right at the end but uh yeah I, I, I just I pray in Jesus name that you develop an up close and personal relationship with Jesus because he is the one he is the truth the way and the life he loves us all dearly and he's real he's an actual person and if you don't know him if you don't know this you can just say the words Jesus, if you are real, pre please prove yourself to me uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Please make it extremely and abundantly clear that you are real and that you are my God.
and he will. And that's if you don't know him. And if you do. And you want to you want a better and more intimate relationship with Jesus. Then say that. Lord, I I want a better and closer relationship with you. I want to actually get to know you as a person. And and say that prayer consistently. And he will hear you. He does hear you. Alright? So, thank you everybody for listening. And I'll see you in the next video.